Our gathering song is number 394 in the Breaking Bread hymnal, Here I Am, Lord, number 394. Let us pray. O oh God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant Susanna, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, Freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And I'd now like to call Lisa forward to proclaim our first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seem, in view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet their hope full of immortality. Chastise the little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. So those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect, the word of God.
to you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul, my God. <laughs> to you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift Make known to me, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, for you are my God, and for you I will wait. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift is the Lord. He shows us the way. He guides the meek to justice. He teaches the humble to follow his ways. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up. The second reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are unaware, or excuse me, brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through the baptism into death, so that just just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in his resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful bodies might be done away with, that we might no longer be slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If we then have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. resurrection and the life says the Lord whoever believes in me will have eternal life the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke 
It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. To Christopher, Lisa, Mark, Joseph, and all of Susan's relatives and friends who are able to join us today in person or through the live stream, on behalf of Father Verespi, our pastor, Father Fidel, our assistant, and the communities of St. Nicholas and St. Mary's parishes, I'd like to extend to you our profoundest sympathies and prayers. And I'd like to share our faith with you. I'm not going to pretend that I can fully grasp the shock and the pain that you're experiencing at this moment. There isn't any easy time to lose a loved one, but I can only imagine that this is one of the more difficult ones. I wish I had magic words that could take away the pain of this moment. I don't. And yet, even in the face of tragedy, when all our words seem to fail, there is still one choice that is ours to make. We can choose to love. Like Joseph of Arimathea at the time of the death of the Lord or the women who came to anoint him, we can choose to practice mercy. We can choose to care for one another. We can choose to bear one another's burdens, to comfort one another with our presence and our memories, to pray for Susan and to pray for one another. Today we choose to be witnesses of love because of the love that we have received from Susan and because of the love that we have for her. And yet, our love wants so much more than simply to remember our loved ones, doesn't it? Our love reaches out for the presence of the one we love and will settle for nothing less. Love wants to bring us together again, even in the face of death. And this is where human love reaches its limits. Our love is strong enough to unite us in prayer and fellowship, even across the miles, to give us some measure of consolation. But there are separations that it cannot bridge. Our love alone is too weak to cross over the divide between life and death. Often it's too weak to overcome estrangement in a family or a grudge between old friends. 
And yet our faith teaches us that the divisions that separate us do not have the final word. We believe that there is a love that can forgive any injury and break through every barrier of hostility. We believe in a love that can unite us across absolutely any divide, a love that is stronger than death. We believe in the God who is love, the God who offers us everything that he has and is, holding nothing back. The God whose only begotten Son was even willing to suffer the pain of torture and death just to enter into relationship with us. The God that we call Father calls us to be his daughters and sons. Through the proclamation of his word and the administration of the sacraments, he invites us to receive into our hearts the love that is capable of overcoming even death and to radiate that love into the world. If we search our memories, I think we'll find that we have seen glimpses of this love in our own lives. I don't think we need to look very far. When I spoke with Lisa this weekend about her sister, it was abundantly clear to me just how much Susan loved God and others, especially her little brother and sister and her two nephews. She took care of everybody, whether that was during summer road trips or picnics when she was the one to remember those things that everybody needed, but uh, often everybody else seemed to forget. Or when she took her nephews out to ice cream when her mom was at work, when their mom was at work. Even though the isolating, even through the isolating force of this pandemic, she strove to stay connected to her faith and to live that faith out in practice. I'm not saying Susan was perfect. I am saying that she knew the importance of drawing out the boundless, drawing from the boundless source of life and love that never runs dry, for strength to persevere through sorrow and distress, and for the willingness to go on loving, even in the most trying of times. And so, inspired by the example of Susan's faith and love, we come together in prayer today. We pray for Susan, thanking God for her life, and we commend her spirit into the hands of the Almighty Father, asking the Lord in his mercy to forgive her sins and grant her peace. We also pray that the Lord may console us today in our grief that even as we continue to mourn Susan's parting from us, we may find strength in the midst of our sorrow to go on living and loving. Finally, as Susan was reborn in the waters of baptism as a favored daughter of the God who is love, we pray that the word of God and his sacramental grace might also penetrate into our hearts and that the love of the Father working in us, might one day gather us all together again with Susan around the great banquet table of his heavenly kingdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. And to the following prayers, please respond. Hear our prayer. 
In baptism, Susanna received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Our sister Susanna was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. For the friends and members of our families who have gone before us and await the kingdom, grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Many people die by violence, war, and famine every day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and friends of Susanna seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. We're assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Susanna, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to ask Mark and Joseph if they would bring forward the gifts. Our song for the presentation of gifts hymn is number 435, Be Not Afraid, number 435. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I will give If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Susanna, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Susanna, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy, be thy, name. thy name. Thy kingdom come, <coughs> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, we are good and not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Our song during communion is number 324, One Bread, One Body, number 324. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this world. 
Lisa has asked to say some words of remembrance, so at this time I'd like to call her forward. I had actually written this um, decades ago. I used to work in a hospital and between November and January, you would have more people die than any other time of year. And it got depressing. And uh, I had gone into the chapel to kind of get away from it all. And I came upon an article that the Blessed Mother had told the seers in Magigori that more people die around Christmas time because the birthday presents to Jesus. I couldn't find the original. It's buried somewhere in my stack of poems that I have. So I kind of redid it from memory. Um, Christmas in heaven is such a wonderful place. People all waiting to see a familiar face. My mom is coming said a man. Last time I saw her, she was very sad. She rocked me in her arms and sang to me. They tell me now that she's 80. <clears throat> Our daughter is coming today, said a couple with glee. Last time we saw her, she was 53. I hope she remembers us when we were young. Jesus is getting the Beth per birthday presents this year. Yes, all our friends and families are coming here. Cousin Heaven, everyone knows there's no better gift to give than love and life well lived. Another thing I wanted to say about her being my sister. And the good thing about being very different and being in a family where you can't leave and you have to learn to love them is that you learn that you can love people who are very different from you. That you don't have to look at the world and see it the same way to be able to see the value and the gifts and the joy that each and every person can bring to everybody. It made me aware of how to word things, how just because I thought something was wonderful didn't mean somebody else would take it just as wonderful. To make sure that when I was saying a joke to make sure the person understood it was a joke and that they would take it as funny and not be insulted by it. It taught me compassion for other people's feelings. When we were little, and Chris even said he remembered things. She used to tuck us in and out, kiss us on our forehead, and bless us. Now I got to do that now for the last time for her. And I'll miss her. Thank you, Lisa, for those heartfelt words. Trusting in God, 
We've prayed together for Susanna, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Susan again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. to a place of everlasting love to join there with the angel choirs and blessed saints and to behold your glorious holy face receive Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Susan in the sure and certain <clears throat> hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. Our song of sending forth is 196, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 196. <laughs> 